In this problem, we have a function uh, telling us the position of an object as it moves along the x-axis. And it is given by this formula, which is equal to 3t minus 4t squared plus t cubed. And x is in meters, and t is in seconds. Now, the first four parts of this problem, a through d, ask us to find the position of the object at various values of time, t. Now, these are all fairly simple. Because this formula is uh, a formula that takes an input of a value of time and outputs a position in meters, then these first parts of the problem are as simple as just plugging in those values into the t variable and finding the output. So I will show that for these first parts here. So here I have filled out the information for the first four parts of the problem. For part A, we have to find the position at one second. So I've plugged A in for the function, which gives us a position of zero meters. For part B, we have to find the position after two seconds. So I plugged in two in the function, which gives us uh, a position of negative two meters, meaning our position here is uh, two spaces uh, in the negative x-axis. In part C, we're asked to find the position at 3 seconds, so I've plugged in 3 for the function, and we get an output of 0 meters once again. And for part D, we have to find the position at 4 seconds, so I've plugged in 4 for the, for the function, and we get an output of 12 meters. So that's the first four parts of this problem. But now we have part E, and part E asks us to find the object's displacement between the t values of 0 and 4 seconds. Now remember, displacement is defined as the change in position between two points. So what we want to do here is take the position at the higher point in time, the later point in time, so 4 seconds in this case, and then subtract the position at the lower point in time, so 0 seconds in this case, uh, to find out how much the position has changed from 0 seconds to 4 seconds. So here I have set up that expression, and I'm using a delta or change in x to represent displacement because uh, that pretty closely goes hand in hand with the definition of displacement as a change in position. And I've set that up as a subtraction expression. So the position at 4 seconds minus the position at 0 seconds, in both cases being represented by an input value being put into this function up here. Now we've already found in part D that the position at 4 seconds is equal to 12 meters, and we're subtracting from that the position at 0 seconds, which we can pretty easily see is just going to be 0 meters. So 12 minus 0 is just going to be 12. So our displacement from 0 seconds to 4 seconds is just going to be 12 meters. Part F asks us to find the average velocity for the time interval from 2 seconds to 4 seconds. Now as we know, our formula for average velocity is equal to displacement or change in position divided by a time interval or change in time. Now in this case, our change in time, our time interval, is from 2 seconds to 4 seconds. So I'll write the change in time as 4s minus 2s, so 4 seconds minus 2 seconds, to represent that time difference. And uh, to find that position difference, we'll need to find, we'll need to have the positions at each of these uh, points in time. And we found both of these in the problem. So at 4 seconds, it's going to be uh, right here, x of 4. And it's going to be minus x at 2 seconds, so x of 2s. And that is our function. And we'll want to substitute in the values that we calculated for each of these uh, values above. So for x at 4 seconds, the position at 4 seconds, that's 12 meters. And we're subtracting the value at 2 seconds, which we found to be negative 2. So that's uh, 12 minus negative 2, so the minuses cancel out and become just a plus, so that becomes uh, 12 meters plus 2 meters, all divided by uh, 2 seconds. So this just becomes 
14 meters divided by 2 seconds, which is just equal to 7 meters per second. So that is our average velocity over this time interval. For part G, the final part of the problem, we're asked to graph x versus time for an interval of 0 to 4 seconds. And we are also supposed to indicate how the answer for part F can be found on said graph. So if you have a graphing calculator, then this is as easy as plugging in this function into your calculator in graphing mode and sketching out what you can see and then adding in the other relevant details that the problem asks us to include. If you don't have that at your disposal, then it might become a bit of estimating. It might become a bit of uh, plotting out some of the points that we do have and then estimating what the missing points on the graph are. But ultimately, we should end up with a graph that looks something like this. So I've included the, uh, the time intervals from 0 to 4 seconds as the problem asks. And it shows the line, uh, the curve of the graph, as it would appear on a graphing calculator. Notably, the problem asks us to show how the answer for part F can be found on this graph, and that is what I've indicated with this dotted line. Keep in mind that part F asked us to find the average velocity uh, from time values of 2 seconds to 4 seconds, which is simply a matter of adding up the total distance that we've traveled throughout that period of time and dividing that by the amount of time that elapsed which will get us a straight slope that we have here. And note that it does not necessarily represent the actual slope perfectly, but doing that without knowing the full detail exact behavior of the graph will help us to get a general estimate for what the graph is doing throughout this time interval.